Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Total War Three Kingdoms Real Battle Tactics series, this time looking at the Siege of Changshu. Now, this was a battle that is really not that well known. Um, however, it did play a major part of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, and it's a battle between Huang Fu Song, one of the three main generals going against the Yellow Turbans for the Han Dynasty, and Bo Tsai, one of the junior leaders of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Now the preamble to this is very very detailed and quite long so I'm going to make this very very simple okay um, basically for many many years there had been mismanagement of China uh, emperors were corrupt the current emperor Emperor Ling was exceedingly corrupt the court was corrupt there had been prescription against great families which led to infighting within the court there had been massive corruption with the selling and buying of offices um, there had been a series of military losses over in the northwest that had led to the Silk Road being taken and having to be fought over and taxation had been massively increased to pay for this campaign as well as to construct a whole load of fortifications along the Silk Road to make sure it wasn't lost again. At the same time China was suffering from a series of natural disasters including a huge famine led by floods and just poor weather. This meant that numerous uh, resettled former soldiers in the northeast were suddenly starving. Now, these guys had a level of military experience. They were there with a lot of farmers who had also been resettled in the northeast um, and had nothing else to do but to turn to a charismatic leader. Because of famine and disease, faith healing became a huge thing during this period of time. And there were numerous faith uh, healers that popped up all over China all sort of connected to the yellow turbans uh, one way or another because the color yellow was supposed to symbolize what would follow from the Han. The Han of course used red as their color. Uh, yellow would follow in Taoism. However, uh, the people we're going to look at specifically right now are the main yellow turban rebellion as they're remembered led by Zhang Jue, Zhang Liang and uh, Zhang Bao. Now, they really kicked off north of the Yellow River, north of Luoyang and Yinchuan in 184 CE and they had to launch their uh, campaign to crush the Han early because they had been discovered through the betrayal of one of their officers and the military in Luoyang started to collect itself together to crush this rebellion so they kicked off early and all over northeast China there were rebellions but we're going to be focusing on what was happening around Luoyang so this happened with uh, Bo Tsai kicking off in uh, Yingchuan, as we see on the Total War map, near Xu, with other rebellions kicking off in Nanyang, Chen, Runan, slightly further south. So generally this whole area had massive problems. What happened, what the response was from the court was this. They collected Lu Zhe, Hong Fu Song, and Zhu Jun to be their generals. Lu Zhe was the main general, and he was sent off uh, to go up north. To deal with Yingchuan, Chen, Nanyang, Runan, they collected Zhu Jun and Huang Fu Song and told them to go and crush the rebellions in these provinces. So, with the armies collected, Lu Zhu went north first. Then Huang Fu Song and Zhu Jun collected their armies, with Zhu Jun heading off first to battle Wu Tai and Huang Fu Song being sent to garrison Changshu. Zhu Jun was heavily outnumbered by Bo Tsai. Bo Tsai had hundreds of thousands. Numbers at this time are just simply not accurate. Um, there is a state that he had 300,000 men, 500,000 men, doesn't matter, whatever happens, he had over 100,000 men. This would also include like camp followers and everything else when they give these figures, but we can assume he had a massive army. Whilst Zhu Jun and Huang Fu Song probably had 20 to 30,000 uh, soldiers each. Um, of those 20 to 30,000, 20,000 were given from troops in and around Luoyang. So these were actually properly, proper soldiers. The rest came from levies. So they had a very strong corps. However, outnumbered as he was, Zhu Jun fought Bo Tai and was forced to retreat. He still managed to keep his army mostly intact, but he was forced to retreat. Bo Tai, buoyed up by his victory, then saw Huang Fu Song on his own and advanced to besiege Changshu. Now this is by no means an accurate map, as you can tell, of Changshu, but it does give you a general idea. There were uh, siege works um, being built around Changshu by the Yellow Turbans. Now they built their camps and their siege works 
nearby this grass, as it's uh, referred to. This is like straw, dry uh, twigs, sticks, everything else. And they were probably using this as a sort of form of defense. Um, think of a sort of very primitive barbed wire fence, okay? And they had this surrounding and protecting them, and protecting their camps from any attack Wang Fu Song might make. Wang Fu Song and his men were a little bit shaken when they saw the number of yellow turbans coming their way. But Huang Fu Song was a very good general. Um, he's a much underrated general and not very well remembered because he was very, very modest and kind and not corrupt. And uh, to be a general of the Han Dynasty at that time, those things did not serve you very well. In fact, at the end of the Yellow Turban campaign, he ascribed most of his success to Zhu Jun. So Zhu Jun got a lot of uh, benefits at the end of this. Huang Fu Song did not get as much as he probably deserved. That's not to say Zhu Jun didn't do well, he did. However, um, Huang Fu Song in his modesty passed up a lot of opportunities and spread it to other people. So he was a very capable man. And when he saw that his men were heavily outnumbered, he needed to do something to buoy their spirits. And what he did was notice a weakness in the Yellow Turban camp, and he understood the changing of the weather. So, seeing that all of these uh, grass defences had been built around the Yellow Turban's camp, and knowing that there was going to be gale force winds coming during the night, he ordered some of his men to climb up over the walls of uh, Changshu at night with torches uh, made of bound twigs and to sneak up towards the yellow turban camps. The dead of night, when nobody was expecting it, they set light to these uh, grass defenses, these, these uh, sort of reed and stick and twig defenses. And this created a massive fire. At the same time, they started screaming and yelling and the drums inside Changsha started to bang and beat and just generally build up this huge atmosphere of impending doom. You can imagine the gale force winds fire burning through the camp because the fire started to spread everywhere as well as the military drums and the yelling and pounding of, of the Han Dynasty troops. And like I said, remember these guys were solid troops as well. They were not like the Yellow Turbans which were a mixture of de uh, deserters, bandits and peasants. The huge core of Huang Fu Song's army were proper soldiers. So with the fire and with the atmosphere now suitably tense, Wang Fu Song gave the order to charge. Smash straight into the Yellow Turban forces, butchered many, and the Yellow Turbans fled very, very quickly. Brilliant piece of tactics, understanding that fire spreads and that wind really helps spread fire. You may think that this is somewhat similar to the fire tactics used in Red Cliffs uh, against Cao Cao by, if you read Romance by Zhu Liang, but actually in history by uh, Zhou Yu, his idea with Huang Gai. Um, it is exactly the same idea of tactics. And as I have said before in one of my previous videos, you must think of uh, naval battles in this as an extension of the land battle. This is an example of those same tactics being used with a sneaky attack, setting fire, causing chaos, and then a charge with inferior numbers against a superior force, creating chaos and causing the enemy to flee. It's exactly the same tactics with exactly the same outcome. So what's the aftermath of this? Well, the aftermath means that Bortai is destroyed and that the rebellion around Yingchuan is put down very, very quickly. Um, this then allows the likes of Zhu Jun and Hong Fu Song to continue to crush the rebellions in central in the central plains of China, which they do very, very quickly. Court interference causes Lu Zhu to be arrested and to be replaced with Dong Zhuo, who doesn't do very well, and then he's replaced. But basically, the yellow turbans are crushed within eight months. Um, the reason why this rebellion is remembered so well is because it was huge and because it led the way for other rebellions to follow it. From this point onwards, you had numbers of large anti-government rebellions wearing these yellow scarves, these yellow ribbons, um, as a means of identifying themselves as being anti-Han. And that is what this caused, this rebellion caused. Wang Fu Song himself, later on when Dong Zhuo took over, 
Um, he was given offers of offices and to do lots of things. He tried to stay out of the way. He was encouraged to even lead his troops to go and remove Dong Zhuo because Huang Fuzong Dong Zhuo did not get on. Uh, but he didn't. He instead was, I think, Rafe de Cresme describes him as being too honourable for the time. He does exactly what he's supposed to do with his job and follows his orders to the letter um, and uh, eventually dies relatively peacefully. Uh, Zhu Jun, however, is slightly different. He is part of the capital defences for Dong Zhuo for a while, but he's obviously been in contact with Sun Jian for a while, and when he's sent to garrison Luoyang, he uh, betrays Dong Zhuo and joins the anti-Dong Zhuo uh, forces, even though the coalition had fallen apart by that stage. Lu Zhu, as we know, um, he's returned to the capital, and apart from when Dong Zhuo takes over, where he makes a little bit of a, a scene um, when uh, the Empress is uh, being hurried around by the eunuchs and there's a lot of fighting going on within the palace. He helps her escape, basically distracts some people so that she can escape, but otherwise he retires. Uh, the Yellow Term Rebellion, however, does leave a massive imprint on China and you have continual putting downs of rebellions with people wearing yellow all the way through the fall of the Han period. And you will see the likes of Cao Pi when he declares himself Emperor of Wei, and Sun Quan when he declares himself Emperor of Wu, using yellow as their rain color. So they actually adopt a lot of the yellow turban insignia and ideas, simply because they are using this rain color of yellow to replace the rain color of the hand of red. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you've liked this. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit shorter, because there's a lot less recorded of this battle. But I thought it was interesting because it is an example of fire tactics that are later used by Sun Quan's armies, Zhou Yu and Huang Gai specifically, against Cao Cao later on. And you do see other examples of this exact same tactic used again and again and again during this period. But I thought it would be a little bit interesting as well just to look at it happening against the Yellow Turbans. And with Huang Fu Song, who's a general who really should get a lot more love than uh, he does and people should know a lot more about. Anyway. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe. If you have any requests for any more information about battles and things of this period, please let me know in the comments below. Bye-bye.